Welcome back to the Price of Business. I'm your host, Kevin Price, talking to you about you and your business. It's your business to be aware of what the government's doing to you. It's doing all kinds of crazy stuff to you. And uh, the story that doesn't seem to want to go away about the IRS harassing conservative groups, you know, and, and, and now the IRS keeps on talking about it in the past tense, but groups like the American Center for Law and Justice, which has a lawsuit representing over 20 different organizations, saying it's not past tense. It's still happening today. This isn't going away. We got uh, Cameron Seward. He's a research associate at the Heritage Foundation. And we're going to talk a little bit about that this segment. Cameron, welcome to the program. Yeah, thank you for having me on. Yeah, I have a buddy of mine who's a pretty politically uh, savvy. You know, we had lunch earlier this week, and he said, you know, makes you kind of think that the elections of 2012, to a certain extent, were void and null, because uh, um, although those uh, tax-exempt organizations aren't allowed to be partisan, they can be issue-oriented, and they can attack candidates on issues, and they had a hard time raising money because of the fact they did not have the appropriate tax status. Think about that. Yeah. No, absolutely, and, and we've heard from the left time and time again, hey, look, you know, this isn't as bad as you think, you know, these people are still allowed to exist, they were still allowed to speak, you know, there wasn't this, you know, they, they, they used the term chilling effect, the constitutional term with regard to freedom of speech. But the, the problem with that is there was a chilling effect. You know, there, we, we see time and time again, and Heritage has documented this, people saying, look, you know, I, I promised these, you know, investors, uh, these people, um, my funders, that I would be able to get off the ground with my nonprofit but, uh, and, you know, get out there and educate people. But I was unable to do so because I was not able to get the, the uh, tax-exempt status Grant uh, by the by the IRS for so long that I did I had to close my doors. Mm-hmm. I wasn't able to go out there. I wasn't able to raise money. And in fact, a lot of times people just had to close up shop and cease to exist. So I, you know, I don't get it. I, I don't get it. And and I would urge your listeners to to go on Heritage's website and check out what we've documented um, out across the country about uh, a couple of these cases. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so what you don't what you don't get is uh, is how people are trying to downplay the significance of this. I don't understand how you can, with a straight face, say that, and we still have people trying to tow this this line of these were rogue agents. Uh, it's very isolated, uh, you know, that it didn't come from the higher ranks of the IRS and all that kind of nonsense, when in fact we have sworn testimony saying that, no, um, this came, these orders came from Washington, D.C., this was out of the ordinary, uh, they came repeatedly and for extended periods of time, and, um, you know, it's really hard as a regular IRS agent with all the policies and procedures in place to, you know, quote unquote, be a rogue agent. You know, you, you, it's almost they were saying not possible unless it came down the chain of command, unless the, your orders were changed, okay. which so, by all accounts they were. Okay, so Cameron, how is it impossible? Well, they, from from what I saw from the testimony uh, that was released by the the um, sub the chairman of the House Oversight and Government Reform Committee, uh, Chairman Issa, that the they they didn't go into the details per se of those procedures, but the, uh, under oath, uh, the agent that testified from the Cincinnati office said, "Look, you know, you can't. We are very regimented in our day. We are very regimented in these processes." There's, you know, step-by-step approaches that we take uh, with these applications, um, so, you know, and, and that is uh, with, you know, no regard to the, uh, you know, affiliation, um, you know, either liberal, conservative, or, you know, even centrist of, of the organization applying, You're, without regard for the political views of that organization. Right. And so, which, which so well, turned basically... out not to be the case. You know, I mean, I guess a couple slipped through the cracks, right? No, right. I mean, this was this was a this was a calculated effort. Yes. Yeah, so uh, basically, they, they can't do these kind of investigations and these stalling mechanisms or methodologies without pushing it to seniors for approval. 
No, they would red flags would be raised and seniors would be notified and and they would also need to seek approval for a lot of these things. Um, and that, that just, you know, obviously because the seniors were the ones handing down the commands, that wasn't an issue. <laughs> Yeah, interesting, interesting. And uh, talking about this continuous IRS scandal, I'm sure, sir, sure you've seen uh, what uh, Jay Sekulow has said uh, that uh, this isn't over yet. I mean, not only uh, they keep talking about it in the past tense, but there are sense of these organizations that have yet to get their tax exempt status. Well, no, right. There's, there's still, uh, you know, there's still people that are that are in. Uh, in fact, they testified on Tuesday. There's, there's still folks that. Have so I think it was one of the um, gentlemen that testified is his organization was under review for 24 months and still under review, still ongoing, had not been given uh, given his tax exempt status. And look, I'm all for uh, you know a, a a ethical process that is applied evenly, you know, throughout uh, you know, regardless of uh, blind to the political views of of that group. But that's not what was happening here. This was groups being singled out that were opposed to the liberal agenda of of the left and they they uh had to pay the price yeah. and not only that i mean this is just this is a, this just gets worse and worse we see this egregious spending by the irs over over the course of you know years and and, and on these um lavish educational uh events or quote unquote educational events and these conferences um, that uh, the are now being the IRS officials are now being asked about as we speak uh, by the House Ways and Means Committee to say, look, you know what is going on here? This is this is, you know, in light of all these scandals going on, you guys are also wasting the taxpayers' money with no regard for um, you know any respect for for the. Um, Taxpayer dime. I mean, this is just ridiculous. Yeah. And, and the, the, so, the Cameron uh, goes on and on. Yeah, Cameron. Well, do you, do you have like oxygen uh, going up your nostrils? <laughs> <laughs> you can really talk, buddy. Okay, so, uh, yeah, it's kind of a saga that doesn't end. And uh, what do you see consequentially happening? I, I think Daryl Issa has really made a joke of this entire process uh, because there's so many things that are so warranted of Watergate-style investigations way back with Fast and Furious. At this point, he's waited so long, whatever he does looks political. Well, look, I mean, he's going to get beaten up uh, by the left. Of course, that's going to happen. Um, you know, what's, what's interesting to me is that this has been going on for about a month, and yet we have seen no liberal or centrist groups come out and say, well, hold on, I was also targeted. Let me get in, you know, in, in with these groups of conservatives. Be, so that's, that's pretty telling to me. There was no liberal and no centrist groups that have come out and say, this also happened to me. And, you know, we're, we're focusing on the House here, but let's, let's look over at the Senate as well. And Senator Coburn is kind of um, launching his own investigation, as he's apt to do, um, with regard to he was, claims that he sent a letter to the R IRS a couple years ago asking, um, you know, for their accounting of their spending on conferences. Yep. And he was given a certain number that is apparently not what was actually spent. And he's saying, well, hold on here. You know, let me get this straight. Why, uh, you know, did you guys send me this when in fact it was actually this much? And let's get some answers here. So this is uh, happening both Cameron. on both sides of Congress, and uh, I think the best is yet to come. I got to wrap it up. Yeah, what was it? Fifty million dollars on those uh, on those parties. I mean, educational sessions, and they learned how to right, dance. Right, right. No, no, they were educational events. That's right. Exactly. They learned how to dance. I saw some of that video actually. Woohoo! All right, no reality TV show coming out of those dance lessons. All right, thanks so much, Cameron. Cameron, of course, he's with the Heritage Foundation, one of the country's premier. Think tanks, Cameron Seward, and uh, thanks for being with us. When we come back, much more for you. I do want to remind you, best content here, including an article about this, can be found over at usdailyreview.com. If you check it out right now, I'm Kevin Price. Stay tuned for more.